creationism, evolution, intelligent design or Islam, and biological evolution, an Islamic perspective. Creationism, natural selection, intelligent design, the theory of evolution. Thinking about the creation of the world, the universe, and humankind can be confusing. There are theories, opinions, and beliefs that state that the creation of the universe was a random act. That humankind evolved from apes and that living creatures climbed out of the primordial swamp. In general, science proves some sort of intelligence designed the universe. Confused? You should be, because that is not all. There is also neo-creationism, old earth creationism, flood geology, the Big Bang theory, evolutionary biology, the common descent theory, and macroevolution. What does it all mean? For many people it must be a kind of lottery, or a theory of the year choice. Each group has its evidence, some believe in God, others do not. Some use science to prove their opinions, others use the book of Genesis or other creation myths. In Islam, the story of creation is clear. There are no partly formed theories or strange opinions to add to the confusion. The creation of the world and all that exists is attributed to God. The most merciful, most wise, most forgiving. God created the heavens and the earth, and all that is between them, in six days. Quran 754 Then Allah completed the creation of the heavens in two days, Thursday and Friday. With that, the creation of the heavens and the earth was completed in six days. Allah inspired in every heaven whatever He would decree concerning it and whatever obedience and worship He would command. Allah also decorated the nearest heaven with stars, and protected it from the Satan's eavesdropping. All that is the decree of the Almighty who no one can overcome, and who is all aware of His creation. Quran 41,12 I created Adam from dried clay, if it is struck it sounds. This clay that he was created from is black and of an altered scent because of the duration it has been left. Quran 15:26. O Messenger, remember when Allah said to the angels Niblis, who was with them, I will create a being from dried clay that rings when it is hit, it is black and of an altered scent. Quran 15:28. God created Adam the father of humankind from mud, clay, soil, earth, or dust mixed with water, and he created his wife Eve from a rib bone. The traditions of Prophet Muhammad, may God praise him, relate that God created Eve while Adam was sleeping, from his shortest left rib and that, after some time, she was clothed with flesh. God then endowed Adam and Eve with the ability to procreate. And Allah has created everything that walks on the face of the earth from a drop of sperm water. Some walk crawling on their bellies, i.e. snakes, while some walk on two feet, i.e. humans and birds, while others walk on four legs, i.e. livestock. Allah creates whatever He wishes, including things mentioned and unmentioned. Indeed, He is capable of everything, nothing is outside His ability. Quran 2400 hours 45 O people, be mindful of your Lord, for it is He who created you from a single soul, your father Adam, and from Adam He created His wife Eve, your mother. From the two of them, He spread many people, both male and female, all over the earth. Quran 4 colon 1 and indeed we created man, Adam, out of an extract of clay, water and earth. Thereafter we made him, the offspring of Adam, as a nutfa, mixed drops of the male and female sexual discharge, and lodged it, in a safe lodging, womb of the woman. Then we made the nutfa into a clot, a piece of thick coagulated blood, then we made the clot into a little lump of flesh, then we made out of that little lump of flesh bones. Then we clothed the bones with flesh, and then we brought it forth as another creation. So blessed be God the best of creators. Quran 23 12-14 Verily, I created the father of mankind, Adam, from clay. I took the soil he was created from, from a mixture of water and the soil of the earth. Then I created his progeny who procreate, by way of a drop of sperm that lodges in the womb until birth. I then created the lodged drop of sperm into a red clot of blood, which I then created into a piece of flesh, which I then created into hard bones. I then covered those bones with flesh and then developed it into a completely different creation, by blowing a soul into it and bringing it out into life. Praised is Allah, the best of creators. 
Quran 23:12-14. In Islam, unlike other religions, there are no great debates involving the separation of science and religion. Islam teaches us that great scientific discoveries and breakthroughs are simply evidence of the existence of God. If scientific theories conflict with the Quran and the authentic traditions of Prophet Muhammad, may God praise him, Muslims simply reject them. However apart from the premise in Darwin's theory of evolution, that man descended from apes, the Quran, and modern science are remarkably in accord. The creation of the heavens and the earth and their greatness and vastness are greater than the creation of mankind. So the one who made them despite their greatness has the power to bring the dead back to life from their graves, to take them to account and reward them. But most people do not know, so they do not consider it nor do they deem it a proof for the resurrection, despite it being so clear. Quran 40 57 More than 14 centuries ago the Quran mentioned scientific facts that have only recently been discovered using modern scientific methods and advanced equipment. The development of scientific disciplines, such as cosmology and astrophysics have explained some of the mysteries of God's creation. Cosmic events that were previously part of the unseen now make sense according to modern scientific theory. Then Allah, may he be glorified, resolved to create the sky at a time when it was smoke, saying to it and the earth, submit to my command willingly or be forced, it has to be one of the two. They said, We come willingly, O our Lord. We have no wish except your wish. Quran 41,11 Modern cosmology indicates that, at one point in time, the whole universe was nothing but a cloud of smoke, an opaque highly dense and hot gaseous composition. It is now possible for scientists to observe new stars being formed out of the remnants of the smoke. Dr. Loretta Dunn from Cardiff University says, cosmic dust consists of tiny particles of solid material floating around in the space between the stars. It is not the same as house dust but more akin to cigarette smoke. Smoking supernova. Science Daily, July 24, 2003, astronomers studied supernovae SN 2003 GD using the Spitzer Space Telescope, and found that it had produced tremendous amounts of dust. In the creation of humankind we are also now able to see modern scientific evidence that seems to be in accord with the words of God in Quran. Many elements present in the earth are also contained in the human body. The most critical component to land-based life is the top soil, that thin layer of dark, organically rich soil in which plants spread out their roots. It is in this thin, vital layer of soil that microorganisms convert raw resources and make them available to the myriad forms of life around and above them. The Quran instructs Muslims to contemplate the wonders of creation, 3 191. Those who remember Allah in all conditions, standing, sitting and lying on their sides, and reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth saying that their Lord did not originate this wonderful creation without a reason. Imagine the precision and timing that allows the world and all that is in it to function. Complex systems run perfectly. The earth is specifically designed for human life and life on earth is a delicate balance, from the lofty skies to the depths of the ocean. The sun and the moon run on their fixed courses, exactly, calculated with measured out stages for each, for reckoning, etc and the heaven he has raised high. And he has set up the balance. And the earth he has put for the creatures. Quran 55 5-10 He fixed a perfectly calculated course for the sun and moon, to teach people the number of years and calculation. Plants that do not have a stem and trees prostrate to Allah, may he be glorified, in submission and surrender to him. He raised the sky above the earth as a roof for it. He established justice on earth and instructed his servants with it. He established justice so that you, O people, are not unjust and deceitful in weighing and measurement. Maintain the weighing justly between yourselves and do not give short weight or measure when you measure or weigh for others. He prepared the earth for the creation to settle on it. Quran 55 5-10 God created the universe and He created humankind. Certain sections of all the theories and opinions that are bound agree with the words found in Quran and the authentic traditions of Prophet Muhammad, may God praise Him. But really that is of no consequence. Nor is it important when theories try to disprove the existence of God.
The sun and the moon are fixed in their orbits and life continues. Muslims know with certainty that the world and all that exists was created by God. When new discoveries prove this beyond doubt, believers smile and wait for the other miracles of God to reveal themselves. The complexity of life is almost as simple to grasp. God is the creator and sustainer of the universe. Biological Evolution, an Islamic Perspective Many people wonder about the theory of biological evolution, the theory that living species on earth today are descended from others in the past. And that the present diversity of living species we see is a result of descent with modification over the course of numerous generations. Muslims also wonder about one of the main processes that evolutionary theory proposes to explain how evolution takes place, the process of natural selection. This is the idea that the individuals within a populations of living organism vary in their individual traits, they are not exactly alike, and that the organisms which are most successful at leaving descendants will pass on their unique traits to the next generation at the expense of the traits possessed by less successful organisms in the population, thereby contributing to a long-term gradual change in the suite of traits found within the population. To start with, it is not our intention in this article to discuss the scientific implications of evolutionary theory. We wish to explore the issue from the perspective of Islamic teachings. We must ask. Does the theory of evolution, and likewise the theory of natural selection as a mechanism of evolution, conform to Islamic teachings or conflict with them? Is a Muslim allowed to believe in evolution as a scientific theory as long as he or she accepts that God is behind it? Is a Muslim allowed to believe in human evolution? If not, how can we explain the fossils of upright, bipedal, tool-using apes with large brains that have been discovered? We wish to re-emphasize that our concern here is not with examining the scientific merits of the theory of evolution. What we want to know is what Islamic teachings have to say about the idea. Whether evolution is true or false scientifically is another matter altogether. When we look at the sources of Islam, the Quran and Sunnah, we see that, with respect to human beings living on the earth today, they are all descendants of Adam and Eve. God also says, O oh people! Indeed, I have created you from one male, your father Adam, and one female, your mother Eve. Therefore, your lineage is the same, so some of you should not take pride in lineage over others. Then, I made you into many nations and dispersed tribes, so that you may recognize one another, not so that you take pride in them, because pride can only be due to Allah consciousness. Indeed, the most noble from among you according to Allah is the one who is most mindful of him. Indeed, Allah is aware of your conditions, knowing of what levels of perfection and deficiency you are on, nothing is hidden from him. Quran 49,13 The Prophet, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him, identified the male mentioned in this verse as being Adam. He said, Human beings are the children of Adam and Adam was created from earth. God says, O mankind! We have created you from a male and a female, and made you into nations and tribes, that you may know one another. Verily, the most honorable of you with God is the one who is the most God-fearing. Alter Medi we also see that God created Adam directly without the agency of parents. God says, With Allah, the example of the creation of Jesus, peace be upon him, is like the creation of Adam, who was born from dust without a father or mother. Allah simply said to him, Become a man. And he became as Allah willed. How do you then assume that Jesus is a God on the basis that he has no father when you accept that Adam is human despite his having no father or mother? Quran 3:59. We also know that Eve was created from Adam without the agency of parents. In the Quran, God states clearly, O people, be mindful of your Lord, for it is He who created you from a single soul, your father Adam, and from Adam He created His wife Eve, your mother. From the two of them, He spread many people, both male and female, all over the earth. Quran 4:1. Therefore, the Quran tells us that Adam and his wife were the father and mother of all human beings living on the earth today. We know about this by way of direct revelation from God. The direct creation of Adam, peace be upon him, 
can neither be confirmed nor denied by science in any way. This is because the creation of Adam, peace be upon him, was a unique and singular historical event. It is a matter of the unseen and something that science does not have the power to confirm or deny. As a matter of the unseen, we believe it because God informs us about it. We say the same for the miracles mentioned in the Quran. Miraculous events, by their very nature, do not conform to scientific laws and their occurrence can neither be confirmed nor denied by science. What about other living things, besides the human beings living on the earth today? What about plants, animals, fungi, and the like? When we turn our attention to this question, we find that the Quran and Sunnah do not tell us much about the flora and fauna that was present on the earth before or at the time of Adam and Eve's arrived upon it. The sacred texts also do not tell us how long ago Adam and Eve arrived upon the earth. Therefore, these are things we cannot ascertain from the sacred texts. The only thing that the Quran and Sunnah require us to believe about the living things on earth today is that God created them in whatever manner He decided to create them. God says, Allah is the creator of everything. There is no creator besides Him. He has charge over everything, He plans its affair and disposes of it as He wills. Quran 39,62 Indeed, God states specifically that He created all life forms. And we made from water all living things. Quran 2130. We know that, God does what He pleases. God can create His creatures in any manner that He chooses. Therefore, with respect to other living things, the Quran and Sunnah neither confirm nor deny the theory of biological evolution or the process referred to as natural selection. The question of evolution remains purely a matter of scientific inquiry. The theory of evolution must stand or fall on its own scientific merits, and that means the physical evidence that either confirms the theory or conflicts with it. The role of science is only to observe and describe the patterns that God places in His creation. If scientific observation shows a pattern in the evolution of species over time that can be described as natural selection, this is not in itself unbelief. It is only unbelief for a person to think that this evolution took place on its own, and not as a creation of God. A Muslim who accepts evolution or natural selection as a valid scientific theory must know that the theory is merely an explanation of one of the many observed patterns in God's creation. As for the fossil remains of bipedal apes and the tools and artifacts associated with those remains, their existence poses no problem for Islamic teachings. There is nothing in the Quran and Sunnah that either affirms or denies that upright, brainy, tool-using apes ever existed or evolved from other ape-like ancestors. Such animals may very well have existed on earth before Adam's arrival upon it. All we can draw from the Quran and Sunnah is that even if those animals once existed, they were not the forefathers of Adam, peace be upon him.